Welcome to your last lab for Physics 185. In today's lab, we'll tie together a number of different things to help us actually determine some actual physical dimensions of a planet and its ring system. And so today's lab will deal with um, occultation of a star. And by looking at how the light dims as a planet and its ring, rings pass in front of the star, we can actually get information about the dimensions of that particular planet and its ring system. In D2L, there is a worksheet to help you keep track of the individual data points that you need to take. I'd encourage you to print that off and um, use it to help you record your data. Let me go ahead and show you what this lab looks like, and then we'll just spend a little bit of time talking about the one calculation that you need. Um, when you open this up, you will get a view of the sky, and your telescope is centered on the star right here. The red bar down here just gives you a measurement of the relative light intensity coming from that star. And so normally this intensity would be a constant. If we go ahead and we start the animation, you'll see that a planet begins to move into this field of view, and notice the light from that planet dims. If you were watching very, or the light from that star dims as the planet moves in front of it. If you were watching and had very eagle eyes on this particular animation, you might have noticed that the light just didn't dim once, but as the planet approached the star, the light flickered a little bit, and as the planet moved past the star, the light flickered again. What this tells us is there's something around that planet that's contributing to the dimming of the light from the star, and in fact, in this case, is actually the planetary ring. What virtual astronomy will give you is they will give you the relative light intensity as a function of time. And so to see how that light intensity changes, you would just open up the strip chart from this top menu. Notice what you see. This red line here represents the light arriving at the telescope. As I scroll through this strip chart, I notice the light stays relatively constant. And all of a sudden here, at about 24.5 seconds, the light from that star begins to dim. This would be the outer edge of that first ring just beginning to move past that star. Stays dim for a while, and then the light brightens again. This is the space in between the rings. Begins to dim again. This would be the second ring. And if we continue to move, Along the strip chart, you see there's one more dimming. And actually, the, the variations in the decrease in intensity actually gives us a sense of how dense those rings are. The less light is blocked, the, the, the less dense the materials in the rings are actually spaced, letting more light get through. And then finally, when we hit about 35 seconds on my particular strip chart, the light begins to dim and stays dim for a very, very long time. And this would represent the time when the planet is blocking the light from the stars. We continue on through, and we see now the rings are again um, moving past the planet, or pl in front of the star, and eventually now with this last dip, the, star, the planet and its rings will have completely passed by the star. Now, using this information on the strip chart, what we can do is we can actually figure out the size of the planet and the inner and outer radii of all of these rings. To do that, though, we need to know the relative speed of the planet with respect to us that we consider as the stationary observer on the Earth. And to do that, we need to know a little bit of information about the orbits of this planet. So what we will do is we will use um, Kepler's third law again, and realize that the ra radius cubed over t squared is equal to a constant. And for our solar system, or one astronomical unit, we just let be equal to one, if we measure the radius in astronomical units and we measure the period in years, right, then one cubed over one squared for the Earth would be one, and since this constant is the same for all of the planets, this would also be equal to 1 for all of the other planets. What you will do then is you will use the information that someone has calculated for you 
Um, perhaps like the lab we did a few weeks ago, where we actually determined the radius of another planet in our solar system. So someone will have determined the distances in terms of astronomical units of your planet from the sun and from the other planet from the sun, and you will be able to use that to determine the actual relative speed of that planet with respect to you. Let's look at how we do that. In order to see this information, you need to go to the check your answers box. And it tells you that the planet that you are looking at the ring system is a distance of 11.8 astronomical units from the sun. And your planet is actually 1.04 astronomical units from the sun. To find the orbital period of the planet, you just use this relationship where you take um, the radius cubed, right, and take the square root of that, and that will give you the period let me rewrite that for you. T is equal to the radius cubed, the square root of that, and that will give you the period of that planet's orbit in years. To find the actual orbital speed of that planet, what you need to do is you need to take the total distance it travels. That would be the circumference of the planet divided by the period, right? So convert 11.8 astronomical units to meters. Find the circumference of that orbit by taking 2 pi times that radius in meters. Convert the period of your planet in years to seconds by taking 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds times the number of years. And then find the speed by taking the distance, 2 pi r, and dividing by the time in seconds. You will do the same thing for your planet. Right? You're given the radius in astronomical units. You'll take that cubed, find the square root of that, and that will give you the planet, the orbital period of your own planet in years. To find the orbital speed of your own planet, you do the same thing for your planet as you did for the first. Find the circumference in meters and divide that circumference by the period in seconds. Now you're ready to find the radius of the planet. To find the relative speed of the planet with respect to you, you just take the difference between these two speeds. Take the speed of the planet minus your speed, and that will give you the relative speed. To find the radius of the planet, what you just simply need to do then is figure out how much time the light is dimmed when the planet passes in front of that star and multiply that by the relative speed. That will give you the diameter, right? And if you want to find the radius, you just cut that in half. To find the inner radius and the outer radius, what you need to do is you need to find the time it takes that middle of the planet to pass in front of the star till that first inner radius of the inner ring passes in front of the star. And so what you need to do is find the time difference between the center of the planet and each of these various times for the different parts of those three rings. The center of the planet, pretty consistently, if you look at your strip chart, the center of the planet is going to be right at 50 seconds. If you don't believe me, take the starting time when the light begins to dim and the ending time, add them together and divide by two, and you'll get 50 seconds. And then to find the actual values of each of these parameters, you're just multiplying the time difference between the center of the planet and when each of these various components of the rings pass in front to figure out the inner and outer radii of each of these rings. This worksheet that's available in D2L should help you keep track of the information and I think will help you um, complete the calculations. If you have any questions, please email me. Good luck with your last lab of the silver.